if you think that title is clickbait, it's not. Well, okay, I guess it is. Look, I'm allowed clickbait once a year. I used it at the very end of the year last year, and I'm using it at the very beginning of the year this year, okay? Forgive me. But it's not as much clickbait as you might think. In fact, it's an objectively true statement. Because the video that you're watching on this channel right now is hosted by a digital platform. You may be able to watch this video, and for free at that, but at the end of the day, I own the rights to my original content. And there's nothing stopping me from taking down this video or this entire channel at any time. But to further complicate matters, I don't own the website to which I'm uploading this video. That would be Google, the owners of YouTube among a million other things. And even though I willingly agreed to YouTube's terms of service and think this video falls within their guidelines, they may disagree. And because of that, they could decide to pull this video at any time as well. I may not even get a chance to appeal it before I'm given a copyright strike without warning. And even if that strike is fraudulent and illegitimate, as was the case with a strike I was dealt earlier this year, it'll take a minimum of two weeks before there's even a chance the video might be restored. By the way, I started writing this script before all the NASCAR YouTube copyright drama started going down. And while I'm happy to report that everything finally appears to be resolved for the time being, it further illustrates the point I was trying to make. Even if you've purchased it, you don't own a copy of the digital media you're streaming. If you need proof of that, look no further than what almost just happened to PlayStation users' discovery content. In December, the PlayStation Store notified its users that due to a breakdown in licensing agreements, all discovery content that they had purchased would no longer be accessible after December 31st. Roughly 1,200 titles from PlayStation users' libraries would have simply disappeared overnight, and not a single one of them would have been refunded. So much for owning a copy of your favorite movie or TV show. Now to be completely fair, the two sides reached a deal at the 11th hour. So thankfully, all that purchased digital media was saved. But the fact that its removal was even planned in the first place ought to serve as a wake-up call. Physical media is so important. You cannot look at that danger and possibility and come away with any other conclusion. Look, I've been aware of this risk for years. When I wanted to buy that 70s show on Blu-ray, I went to eBay and saw 25 to 30 bids on every listing with prices up to $150. Wondering why there was a sudden spike in interest in the series, I did a quick Google search and discovered that the series had just been pulled from Netflix for the first time in eight years. There's your answer. Don't take your favorite show or movie for granted. It may not be around as long as you think. Now I do want to talk about Blu-rays a bit more, because there's been a concerning recent development regarding them as well. After pledging to keep them on the shelves for the holidays, Best Buy is currently in the process of phasing out Blu-ray and DVD sales. While they will continue to sell video games for the time being, many stores have already begun seeing their shelves removed. The news was first reported a few months ago, and only a short time after many Target locations began downsizing their DVD and Blu-ray aisles or removing them entirely, though that doesn't appear to be a company-wide policy just yet. Target and Best Buy are two of the three largest retailers in the country alongside Walmart that sell Blu-rays and DVDs. Being on the verge of losing both of them doesn't leave collectors with many options. You can still order them on Amazon, or I guess straight from the distributor, and Barnes & Noble still sells a handful if you really want to overpay for some reason, but that's pretty much it. So even if demand doesn't drop, availability will. And a lack of availability will only further increase the likelihood of a drop in sales. And a drop in sales could mean an increased chance at another major retailer deciding to go in the same direction. However, there is one more thing I want to bring up, and hopefully it'll end this video on a more optimistic note. The release model for Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer indicates that the market for physical media is still very much alive and well. Not only was Oppenheimer a massive success at the box office, it also sold out its physical release in its first week. It even sparked Universal to issue a statement reassuring fans that they were actively working on a restock. Before Oppenheimer's theatrical run had even wrapped up, Nolan went out of his way to let the movie's fans know that an equal amount of effort was being put into, in his words, a version you can buy and own at home and put on a shelf so no evil streaming service can come steal it from you. He used the exact argument I've been making here. Don't get me wrong, there is absolutely a place for streaming technology in today's digital age. But it has to be a supplement to physical media, not an outright replacement. Because if purchasing streaming content isn't considered ownership, then I think it's fair to ask, how exactly can pirating streaming content be considered theft?